And um, what are we going to do after that? Oh yes, a little Italian selection. We're thinking perhaps about holidays, so this might sort of make you decide not to go anywhere near Italy. <laughs> First of all, the straps. Thank you. 
night ahead of them to decide what to do next.
some special arrangements tonight. Everybody's going to have a bath in the interval. <laughs> so all the ladies get your scrubbing brushes out because you're going to, no, all the fellas get the scrubbing brushes out because you're going to scrub the ladies' backs. Travelling around as we do, and you know, let's face it, when you play like we do, you have to travel about a lot. <laughs> and um, you get elaborate instructions, you know. Um, well, we went to Milton Keynes and we drove down from Wrexham. And have you been to Milton Keynes? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Bloody awful it is. <laughs> it's supposed to be a new town. We came off the M6. And, and the instruction said, turn left at the fifth roundabout. And the roundabouts were about a mile apart. Yeah. And we still didn't come to Milton Perry. Then it was turn left and carry on. Right, left at the second roundabout, a mini roundabout. No traffic lights, just roundabout. We got great for half plus one. Because we're being clever, you see, we thought we could set up. We were carrying an organ. We thought we could set up for the half past seven show. It was a playgroup. So we had to wait till four o'clock. <laughs> and we said, is there a cafe around here where we can get a cup of tea? No. Is there a hotel where we can go and stay? No. New town, let it forget it. We're in New town. No, but what I was trying to tell you was we get all these elaborate instructions. We travel hundreds, thousands of miles in the course of the winter. And we have to travel in the winter, obviously. But, um, it always happens, you get lost, you see. And inevitable happens, you have to ask the way, don't you? 
There's one in every town, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> it happened tonight because there was no indication, you see. It was a good map, but there was no indication of the distance between the M6 and the roundabout by the Greyhound Motel. And we thought we'd missed it. So we stopped and we wound the window down and said to this fella, Hey Jack, can you tell me the way to KP Organs? <laughs> he said, how did you know my name was Jack? <laughs> so we said, we guessed. He said, well, guess where the bloody organ shop is. <laughs> Nice to be amongst friends, isn't it? <laughs> Do you all play? Yes. I'm looking some volunteers for the second half. <laughs> Do you, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> That's four of you, anyway. Come on, don't hide your light under a bush or put your hand up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> because, you know, um, the organ societies way back in, in the in the mid sixties when they were formed, the, the, I think the first ones to come uh, come along were the Hammond Organ Societies, and and they were started purely and simply to get people together, but to help them to appreciate perhaps organ playing and to help them with their um, problems. Well, of course, it soon became obvious that that was uh, it was um, uh, pie in the sky. It was, uh, it was wishful thinking on somebody's part because that could never happen. But at these dues, it's perhaps fitting. But we should perhaps try and give you some pointer which might put you in the right direction when you get home and you sit at the organ and have another go at it. And one of the things that I always say to new societies when I go to them, is the fact that so many people who are learning to play, for some reason or other, usually finish up with perhaps an eight foot stop on the accompaniment, and full organ on the top manual. Now really speaking, you, you've got a non-balanced situation. Because if you listen to the, something like the Halley Orchestra or James Last or, or anything that's big like that, it's not all melody, it's not all bass, there's a hell of a lot going on in between, in the middle. Now, there may be a reason for the eight foot to flute in the accompaniment, because we might be thinking, I better be careful because I'm not sure of the chords. I might play a wrong note. Well, firstly, what the hell does it matter if you do play a wrong note? Secondly, the guy who has never played one has never been born yet. And thirdly, if you play a weak accompaniment to an overbalanced melody, you're never going to hear that one chord anyway. So, what's the best thing to do? The obvious thing to me is to, to build up the accompaniment into something that is, com uh, is, is balancing up what you're trying to put out in the Everybody knows the melody, everybody knows you're going to play some bass. You want to hear what's going on in between. So if you build up a little more, you don't want 16 foot stops on the accompaniment, you want from something 8, 4, 2, and some strings, and, uh, and make it nice and bright. Then if you play a wrong note in your chord, you'll, you'll hear it, and it'll shout at you. And you'll get your chart out, and you'll say, oh, hell, I played a D sharp there instead of a D natural. And once you've corrected that wrong one, you play it right from then on. If you do it the other way, you're likely to play the wrong one all the time. So that's my hint and tip for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <coughs> yeah, we've got one or two bits and pieces here, mate. Put his tongue out at me. Children, you are dismissed. Thank you.